Ooh, Skits is in the house, man. I tell you what, it has been a wonderful, wonderful week, man. The weather is fabulous. The, the uh, temperature is fabulous. There's no rain. It's just been sunny and fabulous where we are right now. So what I want to know is how is it for y'all right now? I mean, I'm just sitting here doing the Skits artwork, just getting down, having a lot of fun. Let me know, man. Give me a shout out there in the chat if you're just hollering, you know, if you're just getting here and you're just wondering what the heck's going on. I mean, what, what am I wearing right here? What, what is this craziness that I got on my head? Well, this, everybody, is the Skits craft mask, man. I mean, this is it right here. What we're going to be doing right here, this is the last update at 16K. We got that stretch goal. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little outline inside your Gemini uh, mailer. You know, just a little outline, a little something on the inside just to kind of give you a little something, you know. And then you can cut it out. You can paint it. You can do whatever in the heck you want with it. It'll be just a loads and loads of fun. That's all I got to say. It's just going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be cool. But so today what we're going to do is we got, oh, yeah, I, it's Inktober. Everyone's excited about Inktober. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Well, you know, I like to do my own thing. It's like, I don't like someone always telling me like, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. Man, if anyone ever tries to tell Skits something, Skits is going to do the opposite. That's just the way it is, man. I mean, that's just, he's crazy. He doesn't listen to anybody. He doesn't do what people tell him. He just does what he wants, you know? So what we're doing, we're doing Scooby-tober, you know? We're going to be drawing some Scooby-Doo uh, monsters, uh, bad guys, villains, uh, you know, whatever you want to call them, you know, like Scooby-Doo was one of my favorite growing up. It was like probably, probably my top cartoon growing up. I love Scooby-Doo, you know, Transformers is probably right, right around there as well. I really like Transformers, but of course that had a lot to do with the toys too. The Transformer toys were just awesome. You know, who doesn't like Transformers? So we're going to be doing that. I got it loaded up on the board over there. Let me let me just add this to the stream. Let me, let me show you something. Boom. So I got it all sketched out over there. What we're going to be doing is actually the Phantom Shadows. Okay. And what's Phantom Shadow? Well, you know, let's just go ahead and uh, let me show you right quick. Let me stop that screen. Let me add, share this other screen here and show you what, what that's all about. Scooby Doo share audio, and I ain't gonna show too much of this because who knows what type of strike we'll get. We'll just do a little quickie, you know, 10 15 seconds shouldn't be too bad. So let me just make sure we're up. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, let's show you what the fan um, shadows are. They're opening. It's them. <laughs> okay, so that right there, that is the Phantom Shadows. I mean, how cool is that? And the Phantom Shadows, uh, they're one of those that were, I think they were, they were in the first season. They might have been one of the first ghosts that they showed, you know? So... That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the Phantom Shadows. I always liked them because like, <laughs> I mean, they're just kind of crazy. They got the chains, you know, dragging along and clanking and everything. I mean, that that was just cool and fun. But before we get started, let's just say hello to people in the chat. Let's say hello. Let's see what's going on, people in the chat here. We got VIP. Hey, VIP. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate you. I mean, you're always here. We just love you. Got Black Star. She's going to be uh, taking care of everything in the chat, dropping links, talking to people, doing all that sort of stuff, you know, because I'm going to be over here drawing and I'll take a peek every now and then at what's going on in the chat, but I'll have to be focusing mainly on that. So uh, let's see here what we got. We got Burst Films. Burst Films. I want this to be really scary, please. Uh, well, you know, it is a cartoon, but I'm going to try and bring it into and just uh, bring it down deep 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 and just see what we can do with it you know what i'm saying so we got george travelos how's it going george thanks for stopping by i really appreciate it you always stop by and say hey 
I really do appreciate all that. You know, that's cool. That's cool. And of course, Mandible Smasher. Mandible Smasher, I mean, he's quickly become like our number one uh, supporter. I mean, he's doing all sorts of stuff for us, man. Got all sorts of fun things and whatnot, man. I mean, it is just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome what he's doing. And we really do appreciate you, Mandible. Really, really do appreciate you. And what else we got here? We got Eric McIntyre. <clears throat> Thank you for stopping by. We really do appreciate it. We're going to get into this drawing here soon we, in, in a few minutes, a few minutes. Just want to tell people a few other things. Also remember, you know, that video we played at the beginning, that's not just kind of fun and stuff. I mean, that is promotion for our comic book, Skits the Sun, book one. Remember, you got three variant covers, three variant stories, one insane adventure. I mean, this is just awesome, man. Go over there and get your three book journey. I'm actually about to get into something and show you, you know, some of the book here. I got, what well, I, I got like 14 pages, 14 pages. I'm going to show you the first 14 pages. They're all in black and white. I'm not going to show you all the color. We've got a couple color pages. We're just going to slide in there for you, but mainly it's just black and white pages. So let me go ahead and uh, get over there and, and check that out. Let me uh, share that right quick. All right, let me share this application window. Bam, looky there. Look at what we got there. All right, so this right here, and I've showed, I think, the first four or five pages on an earlier stream before, but we're going to show a few more pages. This is, I'm going to go in order, one to, I think, 14, 13, one to four, no, 14. We got a double page spread in there, so there's 14. So this is the first page. This is skits breaking out right here. I mean, this is just awesome. Also, hey, uh, Black Star just reminded me, you know, if if y'all are interested, we did put it up on Kickstarter. We're a little quiet about it. You know, we're just like, hey, you know, we'll throw it up there in case people want to buy on Kickstarter. If you're out there and you want to do only Kickstarter, hey, go on over there. You got like 20 something, 25 days left or 20 days. I, I can't remember. But anyway, go on over there. Check it out. It's on Kickstarter right now. You, If you only buy on Kickstarter, you can go do that, okay? Well, anyway, back to the pages. Page one right here, skits. This is skits. I mean, this is serene, you know, nice scene. Uh, fella uh, sitting there uh, fishing. Got a couple fellas fishing. And then skits busting out. I mean, he's just crashing into something. You got stuff flying everywhere. It's just a lot of fun and stuff like that. So that's page one. <laughs> what is the first film saying? You're the only one who can wear a costume, right? No, anyone can wear a costume. This right here, this is for anybody. If if you've back skits, you're getting this right here. It's the skits crazy crazy craft mask. Now I have a hard time saying those jumbled words and tongue twisters and stuff like that, but I actually was able to say that. Skits the crazy craft mask right there. That's what you're getting. It's it's gonna be on the inside of the Gemini mailer. You can cut it out, paint it however you want. I painted mine white because it's you know, white, straight jacket, all that. You know, that's the original. You know, the, orig the original mask is right back there hanging up. You got the straight jacket. There it is. All right, so <laughs> check that out. So anyway, page one, bam. All right, let me get on over here and uh, go through some of these. Got page two, skits. Uh, Getting chased by some orderlies. He's running out of there. He's like, yo, diving through some doors. Someone's shutting the doors on him. He's trying to, you know, stick his tongue out at him. And he hits himself in the head with the buckle on the end of the strap because he's like, oh, crap. I forgot I got, got a buckle on the end of my hand there. But, uh, <laughs> and then you got uh, the orderlies looking at him. He's like, ha you can't get me. I'm outside the door. Well, course not they just tell the lady to open the door and then they chase him so they chasing him out of there and he's going down around the corner you can kind of see him right down in there he's escaping around the corner and those two big orderlies man they're like oh man they're wore out you know they've been eating cheeseburgers you know they just can't can't quite take it you know and stuff like that so they weren't able to get him so skits is gone he, he busted out so this is uh what we're seeing right here, like this is skits in the in the insane asylum telling a story. I'm not going to tell any more because I, I want y'all to actually get the book and see it. You know, I'll show you more pages, but 
I ain't going to tell you all the dialogue and stuff that's going on here, but it kind of shows you, you know, like, hey, this is it. This is what's going on. What, what we got here, Mandible Smasher? What you got? You got I'm not allowed to use scissors or the other sharp objects. Well, obviously, neither do I. That's why you get someone else to do it for you. Don't do it. Just, I mean, you got a kid, make him do it. Make your kid do it. Make, you know, grandkids, if you got grandkids, you know, make them do it. Don't, don't do it yourself. I'm not going to do it. They won't let me have scissors either. <laughs> oh, that means you have to use lasers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's, uh, what, what page is that? That's page four. Uh, yes, Eric McIntyre. Black Star is the model for the doctor, for the psychologist. Yes, that is true. You got that. <laughs> so anyway, you've seen these pages. You've seen these colored pages here, right? Now, this shows where the colored pages actually, you know, are, are involved. So we go from this page and this, these pages aren't colored yet, but it shows you the colored pages from the actual campaign where they fit in. So how cool is that? Bam, skits going, going into it right there. And now this is actually a special page. We actually did skits meets Mr. Chair. And that story actually goes in right here. Now these are some still images from it. I'm not completely done with this yet. I haven't colored the bottom panel and the upper panels aren't quite done yet, but this kind of shows you this one page. And this is the only place in the entire comic where you're going to have actually some photos. And the reason why is because that comes from the video that we actually did. So go over there. Uh, maybe we can put a link down in the description. Uh, Black Star can do that for us. Skits meets Mr. Chair. There it is. That's, uh, that's where that comes into play in the actual storyline. Like we said, this is uh, we're, we're making movies, many movies that are right from the pages of the comic. So how cool is that? And then you have skits, you know, he's telling his story, bam, he's leaving. Now this is really cool. This bottom panel right here, the reason why it's kind of simple and plain is because I have to draw this panel three times, right? This is one of those panels where it's going to have, it's going to be different in every book, right? Let me get some water here right quick. So this panel right here is a little simple. And the reason why is because this is going to be one of those panels that changes in each book. Each book is going to be a little different. And from here, who knows what's going to happen throughout the rest of the book. I'm just showing you one storyline from one of the books right now. And uh, it's going to change in all the other ones. So, I mean, who knows what's actually going to happen. But I just wanted to point that out. This bottom panel right here is when you start to see the books kind of go in different directions. You got a little this, a little that. And this is this is just cool, cool stuff. And then here is where I'm actually showing a different style now. Like we were doing just inking in the first part of the book. And now we're doing pencils. We're doing a shaded type of pencils. And what this is, is this is to mirror the uh, painterly style that I'm doing in the book. You know, this is the black and white before I actually color and, uh, you know, put that painted look into it. And we're building up to that. You'll see it here. It's going to be really, really cool. Oh, we got some other people in here. Hey, Ryan Wynn, I appreciate you for stopping by. We're just showing people pages from the comic book. I think we're showing the first 14 pages, all black and white, except for a few colors here and there, you know, from the campaign. This is a double page spread right here. Now, Skits is right there, if you can see it, I mean, it gets really, really tiny right down in there. But this is a double page spread from the comic. This is just really, really cool. This is one of those that you can buy on the campaign, you know. And actually, any of these pages are for sale right here. You know, we got for uh, you, you can buy a sequential page for 300, you can buy these double page spreads for 750. And what that gives you is it gives you more than that, but you know, that's just the tier level that it's at, you know. With the double page spread, you get the uh, three book journey. With uh, the sequential pages, you get one book of your choice. So go on over there and, and buy these if you're liking it. I mean, this is where it's at. We've already sold one of those double page spreads, so better get on it. And then 
it's the next page right here. You know, still doing some of that. I really, really like this page right here. This is this is one of my favorites so far. This this one's really good. I'm really enjoying this style of drawing. It's you know, it's fun. It's exciting. There's lots of energy. And Ryan Wynn said it right here. Uh, he said, "Let me pop this up on here." You know, fantastic composition. I really appreciate that. I really focus on composition. You know, it's like I really want the eye to go to a specific spot. And that's what I'm doing with my pages. I'm leading the eye around the page. That's what you're supposed to be doing, man. So. George, that's right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I appreciate everyone for being here, man. This is awesome. Let me get back into this, show some more of these pages, and then we're going to get into the drawings. So the next page right here, this is like, he gets across the bridge and it's a little shadowy and misty and there's some people over there by the creek. He's like, what's, what's going on over there? And then he notices that they're skinning an animal that they just killed. And he's like, hey, how's it going, guys? And they're like, hey, who the heck are you? And they get their bow and arrows out. You know, they're like, ah, oh, we're going to get you. We're going to get you. <laughs> and then that's when we get to this page right here, which was in the campaign. This is one of them colored uh, pages. You know, this is the, the painted style. And that's why these pages before it are like this. This is how it looks before you paint it right here. And then bam, right there, you got all those arrows coming at them and then you see skits. He's like jumping through the air. It's like, what the heck is that all about, right? He's just like flying. You know, he's trying to get away from these arrows, right? Right? How's he going to get away from the arrows? Well, let me, let me show you here. Boom. Next page. The arrows go right through skits. What's that all about? I don't know, man. That's crazy. But anyway, skits lands right on top of the water, right on top of the creek, and he runs across the creek right on the water right over to the shore where the people are like, oh, hold up. You know, he's got his hands up. He's like, whoa, buddy. Whoa, what's going on? What's going on? I mean, come on, man. So we got to find out what's going on in the dialogue. You know, we'll find out all about that. But that right there is the first 14 pages of the book. How cool is that? And of course, it's all black and white, except for a few of those color pages, which you saw in the campaign beforehand, you know, some of those big ones, you know, those beautiful shots, those exciting shots and stuff like that. So, yeah, man. Yeah, let's see what we got in the chat. I love this page. <laughs> I appreciate it, Eric, man. I really do. I really do. He said, I really like how the bridge looks. Hey, I know, man. I appreciate that. I mean, bring that. Yes, yeah, that's a good one. And, of course, we're going to be – uh you know, leading up to this page right here, the the coloring style changes so that it matches this painting style right here. So it's really one of those things where it, like it hits you in the face, you know. It's really, really cool building up to this type of look and style, you know. So let's, I think what we need to do now is we need to get into this actual uh, uh, drawing here. You know, we need to get into this inking of the Scooby-Doo pages, the Scooby-Doo Phantom uh, Shadows. So um, anyone have any else, anything else they want to say to me before I hop on over there and I'll be checking in, but Black Star is going to be handling most of the chat. I'm going to be drawing, focusing. I'll show you some other little things, you know, before I get into it and whatnot. What kind, what kind of paint did you use on that page? This isn't actually, this is a digital painting. This is all in the computer. Like this page right here actually was done completely in the computer. There's no original art for it. There's a couple of pages that are like this where I have no original artwork for it. They're just all digital paintings. But most of the pieces are going to have some sort of original art to it, you know, at some point or another. But a few of these ones that I did before the campaign, I just went ahead and did uh, some some a con concept art painting style is what this is really called. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we promise Scooby-Doo. I'm getting there in one minute. <laughs> we're getting to Scooby-Doo in one minute. Kind of looks like an oil paint. Hey, you know, I appreciate that. You know, we're trying to make it look intense and real and exciting. You know, it's like that's, you know, what we're going for. We're going for really cool, cool stuff like that. You know, it's like a lot of people out there do digital colors, but you know, this is kind of digital colors to the extreme, you know, so it's like over the top, really cool looking stuff, you know, lots of textures, lots of color, lots of uh, um, just uh, lighting and stuff like that. So anyway, 
let's go over to the table here and let me switch this over. Let me stop the screen share and bam, look at there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the table. I'm going to mute my mic for a second, and then I'll be over at the other one. All right, I'm muted the mic. How how's that? Oh 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 oh. All right, how's that? Can everyone hear me now? We don't have any echoes or anything like that. Hold on a sec. Let me just got a little something going on with this, and it gets like this sometimes. All right, there we go. Mm. All right, can everyone hear okay? How's that? All right, let me know if y'all can hear me or if you can't. All right, guys, we're going to get into this, and I'm going to explain a few of the pins that I'm using. Now, I got a whole host of pins brushes and stuff like that that I use. Now, I am a brush guy. I like my brushes. So, I like to use brush pens. So, most of these here are brush pens of some sort, okay? But I do have one that's just a Prismacolor uh, 0 0.005 right there. That's for really detailed line work, right? All right, so everyone says it sounds good. All right, cool. So then we got a brush pen right here. And I forget who makes this one. I have to go and look. I have them all written down, but it's got Japanese writing on it. The Japanese make the best brush pens. But this is a really nice brush pen right here. I really enjoy that one. It's got a real nice, matter of fact, I'll just kind of show y'all here. This is one of my pages here, but. Deet, 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 deet. Real nice brush pen. Makes some really nice marks there. Um, then we got the the pentail brush, which is this right here is gold. If you ever wanted just one, this is the best one to get right here. I love this one. It's so natural feeling. But this is uh this is just wonderful. You know, you it's it's a brush, you know, it's got you do like some dry brushing on the side with it and stuff like that. It is fantastic i use that one a lot then i got one of these double-ended ones this has got a sharp end on it and then it's got a little brush on it which is really nice i've, I've used this to where it's almost gone but i just love it because if you move it fast you hardly get anything on there like a natural dry brush and then if you go slow with it you can get a nice dark marking so that's really nice then you got this little fella, another Japanese one. Um, it, it's kind of like a felt tip, but it's kind of rubbery at the same time. And it just makes some really juicy marks, man. I've really, really enjoyed the marks that this thing makes. So I use this one as well. What I'll probably end up doing is uh, in the description, I'll, I'll write down what all these pens are right here. I got them written down, but like I said, they're all in Japanese, so it's kind of hard to tell. And that and then you got another pintail. This is a tiny pintail brush right here, and it's got you know little you can do little mark making with it. All right, so those are going to be the ones I'm using. Plus, I actually have one more that I will be using. 
from time to time you'll see me. I, I got one of these Pentel big brushes here. And I got tape on the end of it. And the reason why I have that is because this one, the ink's completely gone out of this. And I use it for dry brushing. And you can hardly see anything being put down there, you know. So that's what that one's for. Yeah. I I really enjoyed this. Like sometimes I'll dip it in an inkwell just to add a little more ink to it from time to time. So anyway, that one's you'll see me pull that out at some point or another. But I'm gonna get started with I think this little one here. What I need to do here is I need to kind of draw the fingers in. So I'm going to use the little detail pen. I'm going to get started on trying to get some of these uh, fingers in here. Now what I've done is I've done a quick drawing. Just drew it out a little bit here. And uh, now we're just going to go back into it. And one thing I do when I'm doing inking, I try and be as careful as possible. But to be perfectly honest with you, if I make a mistake, I just go back over it with light. So there you go. Let's get into that higher. And I'll use the end of it because it's kind of, that's just kind of how I do things. Or I'll just use the end so it's almost like sketching with it. I just kind of want to make these fingers just kind of all gnarly. Make them a little pointy. They don't have to be too real because, of course, again, this is a ghost, a monster, you know. And the paper I'm using on this is a uh, pretty high-end, uh, hot-pressed uh, watercolor paper. It's actually pretty expensive. I don't know why I'm using it. <laughs> Doing it for y'all, man. Doing it for y'all. There's his thumb back there, too. We'll do that. All right. That hand looks okay, for starters. And basically, I'm just trying to get an outline as to where everything's going to go. All right, because it's like, I just want to, and then I'll come back in and do my serious inking over the top of this. This is just kind of, you know, I, I do, I like to work on my thin lines first and then go into the thick stuff. There we go. Tom. And his hands, I mean, it's all crinkled and. <laughs> all crazy like and then you got the, the shackle with the chain right there and I'll probably end up drawing these chains in with something a little thicker not with this I just want to kind of get these hands in and probably the eyes in too there you go Cause all this is going to be black around the eyes and the mouth. So I just kind of want to. There we go. All right. Let me get these hands in and then we'll move up to a little more of a brush there. Probably get into the brushes next. After I get these fingers in. <laughs> Definitely love this stuff. Love Scooby Doo. I mean, how can you not, you know? Scooby Doo is just one of those that's just universal, you know? Universal. Like the universal monsters. <laughs> Man, I just love this stuff. Go. Ah. Let me 
in this one. Kind of don't like the way I drew this one. We'll just do that. There we go. It's almost this hand right here kind of reminds me of almost like a Todd McFarlane hand or something. It's like something he would do. We're just going to get it in there. <laughs> I love the cackle, too. I, when I was laying this out, I was thinking about putting uh, that laughing sound in there, you know, that they do. But then I was, you know, kind of like how you see in the Batmans, you know, with the Joker, he always has like that cackle. <laughs> well, I mean, these guys, man, they got one heck of a cackle. So I was actually going to try doing that okay so I got the hands in there that's good let me move to a brush now I'm only I'm go to this brush right here this is the one that I said makes a nice mark but at the same time you can do it in, so it looks kind of dry brushy and I'm a huge dry brush fan but I don't think that's what I want right now I'm gonna I think I'm going to switch over to this one. This one kind of like puts down a nice line. There we go. I think I like that. And I'm kind of shaky with my hands because I want the art to kind of have a shaky look to it. There's nothing wrong with the... Uh, and what I did is I actually did some push-ups before the show. So I knew that my hand would be kind of shaky when I started this. And that's just to give uh, that character, that shaky character to the, to the actual drawing you know to the inks there's things like that that you can do and i know a lot of people are like i want to have complete control of my hand it's like well sometimes that's not what the drawing needs sometimes the drawing needs something kind of and crazy and in your face you know and shaky and what's going on here I think I'm going to get to one that's a little more dry brushy for this area. There you go. Yeah, there we go. This is better. That one has a little too much ink in it. Oh, I just went over that eye. Oh, well, I can fix that. We'll fix that a little bit later with some white. Look at that. I'm a big fan of just making marks with ink and then coming back in and fixing it with white because I want that that bold brush look to it, you know, where it's just kind of like it, it's confident line mark. Um, mark making is what it is. I love confident mark making. And that's exactly what we're getting right here on this. This is a completely different style, too, than you see most of the uh, comic book artists out there doing. You know, it's all perfect line work and everything. And, you know, I just think, like, sometimes you don't need that, you know. Sometimes you just need to kind of do your own thing and, and explore some other avenues, as it were. That is what we're doing. We're exploring different ways of making marks. And this one, I definitely got a shaky hand, which is going to pay dividends in the final piece because it's going to make it look all, you know, because they had that way of walking and, and moving and stuff. That was just awesome. nice I keep wanting to make that sound that they make that cackle <clears throat> okay let me do this other area over here now I don't like just filling in black areas with just straight up black you know it never makes it look 
quite per the way I want it to look natural, which if you see blacks, you know, in, in nature, you usually have all sorts of, you know, gradations and mark making and, and lights and stuff into it. You'll never see like an absolute black. And if you do, it doesn't, like it, it almost looks like it doesn't exist, like you're in space or something. It's really, really weird looking if you see perfect black. So I never try and do perfect black. I'm gonna take a look at the chat and see what's going on right quick. <laughs> All right. All right. Everything's going fine in there. Just wanted to make sure nothing crazy was going on, you know, because I can't really see it the way I have this set up. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, there's that, and then I'll outline it a little bit like this. Mm -hmm. Give it that little bit of a hard edge. All right. You can give it a little bit of a hard edge here and there. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, these guys are starting to look cool. All right. All right. Let me uh, keep working on this upper one. Let me move this drawing down a little bit here. So I can get up to this. I'll make sure I keep it in frame, though. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. I know I'm sitting here like laughing to myself, but I mean, I just think this stuff is hilarious when I see it. I just love the old characters from Scooby-Doo. They always had like a new monster or a new adventure every week. I mean, how can you beat that? And the original Scooby-Doo is always the best because they did the painted backgrounds in the animation and it just gave it that spooky look that they never quite got with the later, the later ones. And they always had some cool stuff going on, like, uh, you know, famous people would show up on Scooby-Doo, like uh, the Globetrotters or Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Sonny and Cher. My ESP is telling me we need to go this way. And then Cher would be like, your ESP is screwed up. Anyway, yeah, this, uh, this is doing pretty good. Uh, originally, when I was going to do this, I was thinking, why don't I do a reimagining of the characters? And I was like, well, just doing it in this inking style that I'm doing is going to kind of give the characters a reimagining. You know, something that you're not used to seeing. So I'm kind of excited about that, you know. Let me uh, go in here and work on some of these chains. Get, it looks like we're going to have to work on some of these chains here. It's like when I'm working on these chains, all I can think of is, uh, you know, like Todd McFarlane's spawn. He does, like, chains that are all over the dang place. So that's kind of what I was thinking when I was making this. I was like, yeah, it's kind of like McFarlane 
ones. I'll we'll do it. channel my spawn, my inner spawn. I actually did some spawn comics back in the day. I think I shared them on on a stream one time. If I'm not mistaken. Do, 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 do. You know, every now and then I'll go over and check the chat. So if you're in the chat and you have a question or something, I'll, uh, I'll go check it from time to time and so I don't miss y'all. So don't be afraid. Say hey. I know there's a few people listening for sure. And the reason why I'm doing these chains is because it's kind of in front of everything. So I definitely want to get it done so I can work in behind it and whatnot. Which there isn't going to be much to these guys because they're kind of ghosts, you know. Kind of translucent in a way. But they're like all green and cackling and everything else. You know, I tell you what, these uh, chains can really be tedious. You know, it's tedious work, but it, it'll make it look really cool in the end. You know, just so, so people know, like, things that make your, uh, your drawings and paintings and stuff better is stuff like, uh, like repetition. You know, like, as you can tell, this is starting out small, and it's getting bigger as it comes out at you. Uh, let me move this up so it's more in frame. There we go. There we go. And again, I'm not being too persnickety with my line making because, well... I want it to have a shaky kind of eerie look to it. So I'm not going to go crazy with it, you know, trying to make everything perfect and each little shade mark in the right spot. I'm not a big fan of that anyway. I mean, I know I do it with some of the skits drawings, but, you know, on the pages. But when it comes to inking, I just like the... Uh, I like the uh, emotion you can get from just plain mark making, you know, and not worrying too much about whether or not each thing is in its perfect spot. All right, so I'm down to this clamp. I think my pen is actually starting to die on me. Of course, like, I've been using this pen forever, and now, like, I'm doing it live on air. My pen's dying on me. That's how it always goes. That's all right. I'll be done using it here in a second, and then we'll just. All right. Well, maybe I should. Do... No, I ain't gonna do that other channel. I'm gonna work on this right here for a while. Now I'm gonna go back in and try and give this chain some oomph, so it kind of looks cool, you know. Because these bodies are gonna be kind of like clear, clearish. And then I'm going to put dark all around them, you know, going down this corridor here. So we can make the chains kind of dark and, you know. Watch this. I was, when I was looking for a video of these guys, I, uh, someone made one where they just looped their cackle. <laughs> They loop their cackle for like 10 minutes. I was dying laughing. I, I couldn't stop watching it. I mean, it's ridiculous. But yeah, they're just cackling for like 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. I know that sounds terrible, my, my cackle, but yeah, you know. One of the things I really like about why I use a brush when I'm inking is because of the 
the chance happenings that you get with a brush. You know, it's like with a pen, you know exactly where you're making every mark and what it's going to look like. But with a brush, I mean, you can get a really fine brush and make it exactly how you want it, like a pen. But with a brush, you can, uh, you know, like this where the, the ends are kind of spread apart and whatnot. You can kind of, you know, get random happenings, you know, like happy accidents and stuff like, like Bob Ross always talks about. And that's something I'm really interested in. I like the happy accidents you get from a brush. And, you know, you can always go back and fix it. You know, if something doesn't work, it's not a big deal. You know, I'm probably going to have to go back and fix a few things here and there. Put some whites in, you know, to kind of hype up areas. It's not a big deal. And again, you know, with this brush, the faster you you move it, the more dry brushing effect it gives it. So, you know, it works perfectly for me. I love working fast and, you know, being abusive to my, my uh, materials. I know that word sounds dark, man. I tell you what, though, man, it's getting a little warm in here. Might have to turn, well, I can't turn the AC on. I can't open the windows because then I'll get the sounds from outside. I probably have goats making all sorts of noise out there and stuff. Like hollering at me, feed us, feed us. Goats, just so you know, if y'all have goats, if you ever think of having goats, people think like when they scream at them and they go, ah, you know, the goat, that they're like, oh my gosh, they're hungry. They need me to feed them. It's like, no. They're yelling because they know that they'll you'll bring them some food if you, if they yell. That's why they yell. Most people they're like, "Oh my gosh, they're hungry. I need to feed them because they're yelling." They will yell and yell and yell. The more food you give them, the more they're gonna yell. So you need to just make sure that you put your feet out there with them, and you don't give them any extras because if you do, they're gonna keep yelling at you like, "Hey, give me more food. Give me more food." So we got a few goats around. I used to have a lot of goats. I had about 50 goats at one time. Um, I had, you know, we got a large piece of property here and we were, uh, you know, just, I was playing around with them. This is before I got married. And then uh, once I got married, I was like, well, hell, you know, it's like, I got a lot of stuff I want to do here. So we probably should get rid of these goats. So <laughs> we still got a few. We got about 10 goats. Uh, they're good for cleaning up. You know, they clean up your yard and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, the majority of them are, are, are gone. But they're fun. Uh, the female goats are really, really nice. You know, they, they, uh, they're, they're like dogs. They're like pets. You know, they rub up against you. They come say hey and stuff like that. I mean, they'll follow you around like a dog. You know, they're, now the males, the males are a different story. They they can some of them can be quite friendly and others can be quite wild. You know, you just gotta find out which one you got. <laughs> and uh if you uh weather them, you know, cutting off their, their bits down below, they're a lot more uh friendly, amenable. All right, that chain's looking kind of cool. I've got all sorts of cool mark making there. Let me just kind of move this down a little bit. I'm going to work up here a little bit. And the reason why I'm darkening in some of these spaces here is because it's, uh, it's uh, inside the cloak. Those areas were kind of dark, you know, where the arms are coming out at. And again, I don't want it to be completely black. I need to, you know, be using this. And again, that's, uh, I can't do right there yet because I haven't got that chain done. I might need to go ahead and do that chain. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, this is awesome. And I'll probably, you know, scan this after it's done and put it up on Twitter. If any of y'all are interested, and in, if you're interested in uh, buying it, I'll probably, probably put it up for sale if someone wants it. Won't, won't be too expensive. We'll have to ask the boss what she thinks. <laughs> no, she's like, what? I don't know. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's you. That's right, baby. I was saying, like, we'll have to find out what we need. You know, people might want to want this thing. We've given them away before in the past for uh, contests and stuff. We did that probably this time last year. I did some Inktober stuff. And uh, those were fun. Problem is we didn't, you know, I asked the people to send me some images of them getting it so we can put it up on on the uh, on Twitter, you know, for like promotion. And we never really got anything. We got one from one person, but they were they didn't have a very good camera, so it was wasn't really worth posting. The other person was out of town forever, so we never got an image from them. Oh yeah, this is this is awesome. Yeah, the one thing that uh, people tend to do when October starts, I've noticed this from past experiences, is that right at the first part of October, like they're just gun ho and they got tons of stuff and they're doing it, and then by like when the first week is done, like most people just fall off. So that's why I waited to do this until like after the a bunch of people fall off, you know. It's just like, yeah, we'll wait for people to fall off because it'll be, it's, it's kind of like uh, the first of the year if you go get a gym membership. Like, <laughs> you know, I've always been, uh, for probably 13, 14 years, I've been, I'm not in the gym right now, but I work out at home. But if you have a gym membership, the funniest thing is like, is the uh, first of the year. It's like, on December 31st, you'll go into the gym, and there's, like, no one there. Then January 2nd, like, all these people show up that you've never seen before. And the place is just crowded. There's, like, tons of people, and you can't get to your, you know, to your normal routine because there's just people everywhere. So usually that first week, I usually didn't go ahead and go to the gym. Just because of that, or go at a weird hour or something like that. But that first week, man, the place is packed, and there's people everywhere. And then by the second week, at, you know, second week of January, they're all gone. There's a couple of laggers, but most of them are all gone. So, yeah. That's kind of like how it is with Inktober. You got a bunch of people who are gung-ho, you know, week one, and then week two, they're, a lot of them are just gone. Because it's a lot of work, you know. I won't say anything bad about anyone. But it's just, it's a lot of work. And you don't think about it, you know. Like, Ben Frega, man, he's doing one every night. Every night for the whole month. It's like, I can't do that. I got too much work, you know. Like, I got regular work, plus I'm working on skits. And it's like, you know, I was like, I, I can't do that. I can't make that commitment to do that every day. Plus, Sunday I wouldn't be able to do because... Sunday we do church, so. But, man, that's awesome that Dan's doing that. I've been checking him out, checking out his drawings. He's awesome. And shout out to him. Go go back to uh, Black Flag, you know. He's uh, He had us on his show when we were live a couple times. He helped launch us. And uh, I can't say enough about him. He's a super sweet guy. And we really appreciate all the help he's given us. And he also backed the book, you know. It was cool. Uh, it's really cool. All right. Drew all those in. Well, let's get back to making them look cool here. Get that dry brushing effect on there. Yes. 
see. That's awesome. This is also a good way. Um, I showed this technique of drawing last year about this time for Inktober. I did a, uh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle drawing, and I did the inking of it the same way as this. And it looks fantastic, man. I mean, it, it looks great for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because they're, in my opinion, the turtles should be grungy and raw and everything. So it just turned out looking really good. I'm gonna go check the chat right quick and see how everyone's doing. Make sure everything's going okay. So we got alright, so we got stuff going on. Alright. Black Star, baby, if you can. If there's some really good questions or something like that, why don't you put them up there for me and I'll check them out and answer them. If you can, I'd appreciate that. She's back in there doing the thing for me, you know, like posting stuff and writing in the chat and everything. So maybe she can, you know, if someone's got a question, go ahead and post it up. I never really liked uh, inking when I was younger doing drawings and stuff like this um, because with comic book artists, you know, they back then everyone did um, pen nibs, you know, the quills. So I, I bought some of those and I found out real quick that I'm not a quill guy. I cannot use those things for nothing because I'm. You ha what, what you have to do is it's, you know, you have to use it in the same direction every time. You know, it's a very repeatable stroke making. And I'm, I just, that's not the way I'm wired. I, I can't do things like that. So what I would do is I'd be trying to do my thing and I'd be stabbing it into the paper and I'd be splotching ink everywhere and it'd just be a mess. So I just, I never did it. You know, I never but then when I got more into fine art, you know, I, I really enjoyed, I found out that I really enjoyed inking. Uh, but it was because, you know, I was doing it a different way, not like comic book people were saying you need to do it, you know. And I understand, you know, they got to do that for certain reasons, you know, they got to, they got a, a graphic style that they have to do in order to work really fast, you know, and especially because the way comic books were printed at one time, you needed that black and white. You don't need that anymore. You know, it's not really, not really a thing anymore. Nowadays you can do art anyway and uh, just make it sing. That's why, you know, uh, I think it was, was it Eric was asking earlier? Like what type of uh, was that water or oils that I was doing? And I was like, no, that's just in the computer. And the problem is, is like we still do comic books the same way in the computer that we would do uh, traditionally on a piece of paper. And it's like, well, the tools are such that we can do it differently now. You know, you don't have to do it that way. So I always was like, man, you know, if I'm going to do it in the computer, I want it to have a different look and feel, you know. So there you go. Now he's they're gonna be in this dark hallway, so I need to start putting that in. And I think I'm gonna just do it with this one because it's kind of light and let me get my mark making this way. I'm just putting this stuff in light right now. I'm gonna, all right. I'm making my 
the marks go the same way that the materials in the background is because this is kind of like the ceiling right here. But it's going to get a lot darker, but I'm just kind of roughing it in right now. And this way, the way I'm using this ink pen right, or this brush is uh, kind of like you would the side of a pencil, right? You put it on its side so you just get light mark making. And that's really what I'm doing here. Uh, of course, it ain't going to look like this one's finished, but this is just me. Uh... Okay, we got a question here. Let me look at this. Scooby-Doo's name came from Frank Sinatra's Stranger in the Night. I believe so. I mean, wasn't that like Scooby-Dooby-Doo? Something like that. I think I heard that somewhere. I don't know. You can go over on uh, Wikipedia. I'm sure they, they can tell you. I don't know. Oh. What is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to white out that kind of. I don't know why I did that. That's interesting. Anyway, no big deal. I don't think anyone saw it. But yeah, I think that's uh, definitely something. All right, what we got here? Ryan Wynn. I worked on Spawn for too long. Never can draw chains again. What Spawn did you do? Uh, well, I worked, when I worked for Todd, uh, he was talking a lot about changing the way that the comic's done. And I kept trying to tell him, I was like, the reason why I like the, the early spawns is because they're kind of personable. Like you had all sorts of crazy characters coming into play. And, um, you know, it just seemed like it was a lot more interesting. And then later on, uh, the spawn today, I don't even know what's going on in there, but then, you know, you start getting like 20, 30, 40 issues into it. It just, to me, became really boring and it lost the personal edge. So I was like trying to do something more personable. And it was basically about a kid, a homeless kid who was living <clears throat> in, uh, in a cardboard box in an alley. And Spawn was kind of like his protector. So it was kind of like this personal aspect. And I just did like a short story. I, I did some... I think I actually illustrated the whole thing. I know, I don't think I ever showed it to Todd, though, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know why I never did, but I just, I don't know. Might have been around the time I, I was finishing it up, around the time that I got laid off, so I couldn't show it to him. <laughs> that may have been what happened. So, but I, I can't remember, to be perfectly honest with you. Can't remember why I didn't show it to him, but it was cool. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun. What I what I did, I'll pull it out sometime and show people. I think I showed it before on an earlier stream sometime. Oh, yeah. It's going to be cool. There we go. But I really enjoyed my time working at McFarland. I've talked about it before on here. It was, uh, 
there's a lot of really cool creative people that were working there. Um, I don't think any of them really cared for me, to be perfectly honest with you. Like a few of them did, but I don't know. It's like they, there was cliques there. Uh, you know how people always talk about high school, there's cliques and stuff. Well, there was cliques there, like Todd's in the inner, inner workers, you know, like the inner sanctum of workers that he had. <laughs> Those guys, they just didn't want to, I don't know. They're odd, odd cats. But whatever. You know, it was what it was. I enjoyed my time there. But all the rest of the people were really cool, you know. There's a lot of a lot of cool people there, a lot of friendly people. Of course, I mean you're gonna attract a lot of creative people when you're uh Todd McFarlane, so your name gets you top people working for you. You know. I'm just trying to put some beams, you know, something to give a little more interest up here. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just putting in some, some beams. And I have to go in and white out some of that, you know. But using, don't think of it as just a white out. You know, I'm not just whiting something out. What I'm doing is I'm using white to put more dimension into the actual piece, you know. So that's what I'll be doing at the end of this. My buddy Jay Gonzo used to work there in AZ. Hey, I I know Gonzo. He worked there when I was there. Yep, he's a. I tell you what, Gonzo is probably one of the best designers I've ever been around. Like his uh, his uh, sense of color is bar none. I mean, he is incredible when it comes to to color. I need to get him on the show here sometime. I need to contact him and say, hey, come on over on the Skits Fun House. Maybe I'll contact him this week and see what he's doing. Oh, while I'm mentioning that, uh, we're going to have uh, Peter Samedi on the show on Thursday. Uh, it's going to be 1 o'clock in the afternoon. He's a busy guy, and that was the time that we could... Uh, get together you know we're busy too so that's just the time that worked out best for us both so that'll be fun come on over and say hey to us i'm excited to talk to him we were on a show uh, a few weeks ago and uh I, we just really like really like peter old publishing pete <laughs> he's a good guy real nice guy I still really wish I had those uh, those cackles. <laughs> These guys do. I want to play them for like an hour. Just sit here and draw and listen to them dang cackles. People would tune out really quick, but I would think it was kind of funny. I think we did that one time with that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one. We had this uh, loop of, of vanilla ice going... Go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja. You know, do an acapelago. <laughs> Friggin' vanilla eyes. 
awesome. You know, so many people like busted on Vanilla Ice back in the day, but he was awesome, man. He made some. He made one really good song, man, that we'll never forget. Never gonna forget that song. This is the point where I need to get me a, a bigger, better brush. I probably should have pulled out some regular inks and a brush. Fill in some of these areas I'm about to do here. Yeah. Tell you what, this is looking awesome. I've had a lot of fun with this. is enough to make anyone scared. They don't want to go in. Don't do it. They'll get ya. So what type of, uh, you were saying that you got bored of drawing chains. What, uh, what were you doing? I mean, what type of spawn stuff? You know, like what period? Is there a specific, you know, spawn that you like? There's so many different ones. You like the medieval spawn, the one that was kind of pseudo out of existence. <laughs> I don't know. Did you get the rights to use medieval spawn back? I don't know. Angelina, you know, that's stuff that uh, Neil Gaiman created for him. Let's see, let me get another one in there. I don't know. Do, 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 do. And of course, none of this has to be perfect. It's just like, we're just putting it in there for fun, you know, background. Mm -hmm. So how's everyone doing today? I know I asked that earlier on, but I think we got some other people in here now. How is everyone? Is everyone doing all right? We're doing okay here. Just doing our skits, you know. At the beginning of the show, if you're just tuning in, I showed uh, the first 14 pages of skits, so go check that out. That's cool. Need to go back to these hands and thicken them up a little bit. That's something I'm going to have to do. Again, I mean, it's like using this brush. It just gives it that scary look, you know, which is just awesome. And this brush is starting to die out on me. Well, I guess I could squeeze it. That's the thing with these. If it runs out of ink, you can squeeze it and put some more on the page. I was Danny Mickey's assistant inker, so I was on chain duty for years. Oh, my gosh. Chains for years. You literally were doing chains for years. That is crazy, dude. That's awesome, though. I mean, shoot, you know, you like professional inker and everything, you know. Have you worked on any other stuff? 
you know, always interested in what people are doing, you know. What other types of stuff did you do? Are you allowed to tell me? Yeah, I, uh, I was at McFarland from 2007 to 2009, the end of 2009. Yeah. yeah they had a big layoff because the economy went to crap, you know, in 2009. And, uh, yep. So they laid off a bunch of people, you know. Because the economy went bad and they sent all, like, my job. I think they sent my job back over to China. <laughs> it was like, hey, man, it's like, that's what, uh, that's what caused the problem in the first place. All the jobs being sent overseas. That's kind of what was one of the issues, you know. But, yeah, whatever. You know, they got to do what they got to do. I know a lot of people that I got laid off with, they were man they're like oh my god i can't believe i'm getting laid off what's going on and i was i told them i was like dude man it's like it's hard times they gotta do what they gotta do you know, don't be mad at them you know be happy that you had the opportunity to work there you know i understand it's tough but yeah a lot of people were pissed felt bad for them a little bit but oh well People that never really talked to me, I didn't feel bad for them, though. <laughs> no, I did. I felt bad for them, but I was just kind of like, eh, well, whatever. All right, let me, uh, need to kind of define these fingers here a little bit. We're kind of getting lost. But dang, this is a lot of fun. I love doing big inking pieces like this. Just so y'all know, this paper that I'm on is like, uh, I think it's 14 by 20. It's a real big piece of paper. And I like working big. Especially if you're inking, working big is awesome. Because you can get so many different types of mark making and stuff going on. And there we go. Oh no, breaking news. Eddie Van Halen died? Are you serious? Well, that sucks. I mean, he's done a ton of music, but I mean, I've never really been a fan of Van Halen, but you know, some other songs are okay, but. Just never was my speed, but sorry to hear that. It's always bad when people die. do not matter who they are, you know, if you like them or not. Van Halen dead. Well, I guess the band's not getting back together. I've been talking about that for years. Oh, we need to get Van Halen back together. I don't ain't getting, ain't happening now. Does it say how he died? I hope it's not another drug one. It's like, oh, all these people dying from drugs. Man, I gotta tell you, this turned out a lot better than I thought it would. I wasn't quite sure about this because, you know, there's not really a lot of definition to them. But, I gotta tell you, I'm really enjoying this. I like doing this type of stuff. And, I, I, of course, I love Scooby-Doo, so there you go. Bro. 
refreshing quite right for what I'm trying to do here. Let me, let me get this one. What's going on here? Oh, I got an extra brush down here. That's what I, it's like, what the heck is going on here? What in the Sam Hill? There we go. That's what I needed for these. I need to define them. Clean definition on these line, on these hands. Throat cancer. Ah, uh, cancer. Jeez. Lost another one to cancer. Well, that seems to be the way it goes sometimes, huh? Throat cancer. I guess he is a smoker. All those rockers back then were smokers. Shoot, they're always in their videos smoking. Surprise. You know, there aren't more of them coming down with throat cancer. Tell you what, kiddos, don't smoke. It's not good for you. Plus it stinks. I know these things are addictive, but I've never understood the whole smoking thing. Just not my bag. Tell you what, this is really looking cool here. I'm super excited by this. The hands are starting to look a little better. Probably gonna have to go in here and uh, definitely gonna have to do some cleanup. But for the most part, this is this is looking good. Yeah, maybe we should do the best fan art of skits or of one of the pieces we showed today. What are you saying? I'm not, I'm not quite following you, Black Star. Spell it out a little more for me. Oh, yeah, this is awesome, man. Hope y'all are enjoying this, man, because I am loving it. I mean, this is exactly what I needed to be doing today. This is a lot of fun. I need to put a few more darks around them, though, to define them and make them pop out a little bit better. So I'm going to do some more of that. Also, this is one of these, when you're doing stuff in this style, you kind of got to go back to it, you know, leave it for a couple hours, then go back and look at it. And It's like that with any piece of art. You really need to have time away from it, and then you can see, like, a few problems here and there, and then you change it, you know. There we go. All right, that's what I needed. There we go. I squeezed some uh, 
as a giveaway. Okay, so we should do a skits giveaway, fan art giveaway. We should do a fan art giveaway. Why not? Everyone likes fan art. I know we do. We've gotten some good fan art pieces. Maybe we could, so I'm guessing what you're saying is we should do a giveaway for like this piece of art and you know, do like a fan art. Whoever has the best fan art, we'll give them this piece or something. I don't know. I'm kind of liking this piece. Maybe I don't want to give it away. <laughs> Maybe I want to keep it. We'll talk about it. I'm, I'm, one of the biggest problems I have is I, 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 I like to keep a lot of my work. This is just one of those I, I, I might want to keep. I like this one. Maybe if uh, we get enough interest, we can do that. We'll talk about it. We'll talk. We'll have a, we'll have a meeting. <laughs> I'll talk to Bob. Mm-hmm. Might have to go back and put some highlights on these chains, make them pop out a little bit. So is uh wonder how that how he feels about my ink. I can't imagine doing chains for years. But hey man, a job's a job, right? I mean What did you do after that? If you're still in the chat, you know what what did you do after uh, spawn? Did you do anything else? I'm shaking the camera everywhere. Sorry, guys. Chains, bricks, and rubble were my life. Have you done anything since that, Ryan? Like what were, uh, have you been able to move on from that? Did you do other things in the industry? You know, you can, I know you can make a really good life out of being an assistant or a background artist or something like that. I mean, look at that guy who did uh, Cerebus. I mean, he was the background artist on his, on Cerebus for decades, man. I'm a huge fan of Cerebus. I really like it. Except for, like, the first so many books were fantastic. But you start getting into some of that stuff later on, like after his wife left him and stuff. And, it, oh, my gosh, some of that stuff is just too much, too much. It was more of a novel than it was comic, you know. It's like you'd have full pages of dialogue and you know, ramblings and stuff. I just, I don't know. But the first few books, you know, like, 
high society, church and state, uh, all that stuff was just, I think it's some of the best comic books ever. You know? I don't know. I think I'm about done with this. I need to go back and do some whites, but I have to let it dry for, okay, yeah, I was a professional inker. Oh, oh, put it back up there, Black Star. I was trying to read that. <laughs> oh, gotta run. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, man, come back anytime, Ryan, man. That's fantastic, you know. I'd like to talk to you someday about that, man. Maybe you can come on the show. Do you have a, a Twitter? Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to do. Linker for years, you name it, I did it. Now I'm focused on my own indie projects. Yeah, I need to go check out what you're doing. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're doing. And of course, I probably already saw it. I mean, I look at all the different projects out there. But what's your Twitter? What's your project? You know, let me give you a shout out, you know. I think I've, uh, I don't know. I just can't remember what everyone's projects are all the time. Maybe we can get you on the Skits Fun House. Yeah. And talk to you proper. Yeah, I think that's uh send us your project, Ryan. Let's give you a shout out. Yeah. I'm about to uh, I think that's about it for right now. I think we got it to a certain point. There's probably a few things I want to do to it, and I really want to, I uh, need to let it dry and do some whites on it. Uh, there's a few places where I made some mistakes and whatnot, but I'll get them hands popping here in a little bit, and uh, we'll do some white out, uh, some fixing things with the white, and then it'll really start to, to zing. But I think that's going to be it for right now. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go over to the, to the computer. Let's see here. me there we go all right i just had to close that stuff out over there because i'm going to uh just pop over here and talk to y'all for a second before we close this out let me just try and say hey to some people hey ryan when yep, yep. mandible smasher i'm a two pack a day second hand smoker it's cheaper <laughs> that's hilarious oh my gosh this is moving kind of slow. Been on here for a while. This might be, you know, this is probably the second longest stream we've ever done. And we usually just do hour streams, but today, you know, just trying to show. Let me actually bring that drawing over here so you can see how big it is. So, there you go. Let's see if I can get that on camera. That's cool. Now that's Scooby Doo fun right there. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a ton of fun. I'm looking forward to finishing that up and then scanning it and getting it out there for people to see. I'll do good. We got them all. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, the Scooby-Doo one. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to try and do one or two Scooby-Doo ghosts a week here on out. So, you know, we'll come back and do a few more. Can't do them every night like Dan Fraga, but we're going to be doing 
a few a week if we can. You know, we're still trying to work on skits, got regular work to do, stuff like that. But I appreciate everyone for being here. This has been a blast. It was a ton of fun. And remember, 16K, everyone got their skits crazy craft mask. Do it yourself or be on the inside of the Gemini mailer. You cut your Gemini mailer out just like this. It'll have the lines in there so you can do it yourself. Paint it any way you want. And, uh, yeah, there you go. How cool is that, man? Can't do anything better than that. And again, you know, uh, if you missed out at the earlier part, I showed uh, the comic book pages, the uh, first 14 pages, mostly all black and white, a couple of color pages in there. So go check them out. And uh, appreciate everyone for being here. I'm going to – let's uh, go over here and do this. Just give me one second. One quick second. Uh, yes, pick that and let me share this. Boom, boom. Share audio. Uh, what are you saying there? Are you saying hold on a second? Hold it up again. Oh, hold it up again. The artwork, okay. Yeah. There we go. And it shows you how big it is. It's awesome. Look at that. It's still really wet, so I need to let it dry. Um, do some more work on it, but that's, that's cool. 14 by 20. That's how big that page is. Real nice piece of paper, too. That's a uh, high quality, fine art paper. There you go. I held it up again. All right, everybody. Well, anyway, I appreciate y'all for stopping by. We're going to do some more of this. Remember, Peter Samedi is going to be here Thursday, 1 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. So uh, come check that out. It should be a blast. I'm going to ask him all sorts of stuff because he's a publisher of comic books. He's got all sorts of insight, and you're going to want some of that insight. We're going to lay it down, and we're just going to talk to him and find out all about it. So come by Thursday. We also got all sorts of cool stuff. Um, you know, come get some live. She's got all sorts of stuff. She's got uh, someone who's working on Mandalorian. They're going to be stopping by later this month. Uh, we got some other stuff going on. Uh, she's got some other guests. Uh, we got a really, really big guest uh, later in the month, someone associated with Spawn. So that should be interesting. But for now, I just want to say thank you for being here. And uh, we'll see you next time.